Hello, developers, and welcome to the PHP Community Corner podcast, where we have conversations with members of the web development community. I'm your host, Scott Keck Warren, and today we're talking with TJ Miller about Prism, working in Laravel, large language models, and his talks at PHP Tech 2025. TJ Miller is a veteran developer who spent two decades turning coffee into code. As principal at Geocodio and creator of Prism, they're on a mission to make large language models nice to play with in Laravel. Equal parts dreamer and doer, they're known for launching development tools that can make the Laravel ecosystem more awesome. When not crafting APIs or geeking out over CLI tools, you'll find them advocating for ADHD awareness and proving that neurodivergent minds build amazing things. Thank you, TJ, for finding some time to talk to us today. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So you kind of came onto my on my radar because you're working with the you're creating the Prism library. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about what that is and, and what it enables developers to do? Yeah, so Prism is um, a big passion project of mine. Um, I got started with AI like just before ChatGPT came out. It's kind of like it, it caught me uh and i i ran with it but i was always bothered by like not working with laravel i had to go out and learn python to like start playing with things um stuff started kind of happening in the node js atmosphere and i just i wanted to get back to working with laravel so prism is kind of my answer to allowing me to do a lot of different things um with ai and large language models inside of laravel and kind of what like Prism's purpose is to serve uh, is is really to be like a centralized entry point to work with any number of different large language model providers. So right now we out of the box we support OpenAI, Anthropic, um, DeepSeek, Olama. Uh, we're working on AWS Bedrock and Azure OpenAI. So we kind of have this centralized, like unified API for working with any of these providers and really just swapping out a couple of things to be able to, you know, swap between Anthropic or OpenAI, for example, and kind of use the same interface for all of that. Yeah, so I, I found that really fascinating to to kind of like read through the the like the documentation that you have on the on the the Prism website. And like I'm I'm like a very um like AI large language model like newbie. And so like I I didn't even realize that like there were so many like publicly available models to, to mess with, right? That's the, the correct term is models. Yeah. So there's like providers and models. So providers have different models available. So for example, um with uh open AI, you've got GPT four, you've got four O, you've got the O one series of models, Anthropic, you've got Claude, Haiku. And with like Olama, you've got an almost infinite number of different models that you can run using Olama as the provider. Oh, okay. I didn't even realize like there was a distinction between that. That's a, that's interesting. Um, so then, so like as like somebody who has minimal like experience with even with Chat GPT, right? Like my thing is like I throw stuff into Chat GPT and it kind of summarizes it for me. Like how hard is it going to be for me who knows Laravel to to kind of get up and running in inside the Prism? infrastructure. My hope with Prism is that it's very easy for you to be able to hop in and be able to start figuring out the basics and, and building any sort of thing you want. I think a really common starting place is to, you know, it's similar to how I kind of think about jumping into things with Laravel is uh, let me just build a, an artisan command and kind of be able to just drop in there and be able to play inside of the terminal with different outputs. So um, but the hope would be it's very easy to do to hop in and do the basics of just input output stuff for sure. So like, I guess more of my question is like, what is it, what is involved in me getting set up to be able to like, to talk to chat GPT or to talk to one of the other models? Yes. With Prism, install the library, you know, hop over to open AI, get yourself a set of API keys. Um, and then you just drop your API key into the like Laravel environment file. And you're basically like up and running to start using the Prism library. So I've tried to make it super simple to like get in and like a very simple API, but enough with the API that you can also start diving into more advanced things like tool use and function calling. I, I, I'm again, like I'm very basic in this whole thing. So like we're, we have like a, we have been in chat, we're in discussions at work essentially about like how we can like integrate more chat gpt or, or whatever into like our into our products and like i'm just like i don't even know how to talk to these things so this looks like it's a good like way for me to get 
like started on that, at least like working down the pathway. Have have you found like some really interesting, have people reached out and said, here's like a cool thing that we're building with this? Um, or do you, do you, have you seen like, those kind of things online? Yeah. Yeah. I've started to see a lot more stuff come out. Um, somebody had reached out on Twitter over the holidays that they had started building a suite of tools that drop right into the Prism ecosystem. So um, having tools like being able to chat with uh, a Prism agent, like, a, like setting up like a Prism with a model and a provider, and then be able to chat with that and it be able to write queries to your like database, be able to like interface with Eloquent, which is like Laravel's ORM. So you can do some like pretty you can get into doing some like pretty wild stuff with it um and i also know that there's a, a law firm that's using us to like um using prism to like analyze different art like different aspects of contracts um which i think is super fascinating so there's definitely a lot of stuff out there and the more features i'm putting out with with laravel the more or with uh, the more features i'm putting out with prism the the more people are building stuff and i'm starting to hear like a lot a lot more cool things so as we're getting towards like i wouldn't say like feature completion but um as we're getting to like really rounding out the feature set and offering more providers i think it opens the door for a lot more people to get involved and we'll be right back with after this word from our sponsors let me tell you a quick story about our sponsor, HoneyBadger.io. One time, a customer of theirs had a background job that ran overnight that caused hundreds of thousands of errors to be reported to HoneyBadger by mistake. Like many other application and performance monitoring tools, HoneyBadger bills for monthly usage. So this customer's mistake was going to cost them a lot of extra money that month. If you've ever used a monitoring service, you might have experienced something like this. Well, fortunately for this customer, they emailed HoneyBadger support and received the most amazing reply. HoneyBadger was resetting their monthly quota and canceling the bill. This is one example of how the small team at Honey Badger cares about their users. Ask anyone who knows and you'll hear similar stories. Go check them out at honeybadger.io. It's free to get started and setup takes less than five minutes. Don't forget to bookmark it. That's honeybadger.io. And you can use our link to show that we sent you there. And we're back with TJ Miller. So, so and I guess, like, can I take a step back and can we talk about, like, so, so you have a, the ability for Prism to kind of, like, it, like, escapes, like, the PHP section and, like, can talk to the database? How does, how does that, like... Work. Yeah, so there's a concept of uh, like tools and function calling. Um, they can kind of use like tool use and function calling like interchangeably because they're basically the same thing. Uh, if we boil it down to its simplest form, you can essentially expose a closure to Prism that the large language model now has use use of. So you can like register. Um, a tool, for example, that makes API requests to a weather API. And so you can be just like chatting with the model and you could ask it, you're like, Hey, like, what's the weather going to be like for Detroit? And you can have a closure defined that in takes as its input a city and its output, you know, we make the API request in the closure and then its output is like a textual representation of what the weather forecast is going to be. The large language model will then take the result of that closure and use it as part of its text generation. So it'll be able to tell you like, hey, the weather for Detroit's going to be, you know, such and such temperature, you know, it's gonna be freezing and snowy like we've got right now. So that's I okay. I, every so often, like somebody shows me something with like all these these language models, and I'm just like, okay, that blow me blows me away. And then like this is just like another thing where like it being able to use like interface with a code base, right? Like that's that is a fast. I didn't didn't I didn't I read through the docs. I really like, did like a quick skim skim through, and I like started getting it set up, but I ran out of time, and I apologize for that. But I didn't even no, like, realize cool. that that was like a functionality of that. Yeah, yeah, being able to expose like different, enhance the language model with additional functionality is like really what you can get out of these tools. So you can define them as like class based tools or closures. Um, and you can define all sorts of different parameters with them. And yeah, you, you could have it basically like give it a connection to your database and you know, the, the closures input is going to be like SQL queries. And so you could like have a chat with this agent and it's now like writing queries against your database. And you could have like another tool, for example, uh, that exposes the schema of your database. So it can, knows to like, use that one tool to get your database schema, and then we'll write a query and use the other tool to then like actually query your database and like get results back out of it. So you can do some pretty wild stuff. So could I give it like access to my database and then say like, can you make some, like look at this table and make some like summarizations and things like that? What is it? Is that like within the realm of possibility? Absolutely. I'm sorry. This is like just blowing my mind whenever we talk about these things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
when I first discovered like tool use, I think that was that was a big that was a big moment for me too of just like wow, like that that opens up the possibility for you to do just about anything and be able to build these like really powerful agents that you know you could chain together and like they can optionally use tools, different providers you can tell them like you have to use this tool. So you can really give it, you know, you could give it 30 different tools and just have a conversation with it and we'll pick and choose what and when to use different tools. So you can really have a really in-depth chat experience with, you know, a language model that is completely up to date. Like one of my favorite things to do for a lot of my personal agents is to expose a Google search like tool to them so that they can go out and look for more relevant information. Um, I did a live stream with Nuno Maduro and uh, one of the things we did is we built a CLI chat that had access to a Google search tool. So first, before we gave it access to the tool, we asked, you know, hey, what's the latest version of Laravel? Well, these models are trained on data, but that training stops at a certain point in time. So it said, you know, hey, the latest version of Laravel is Laravel 10. Um, then we gave it the tool to you know be able to search the web with it, and it came back with the right version. It says, yeah, we looked at the GitHub for Laravel. Uh, the latest version is Laravel 11, and we'll like even gave us some of the features, I think, of like what's new in Laravel 11. Um, pretty wild stuff. That is really wild. So, so you must have like a lot of access to like, so you probably touch like a lot more like models than the, like the normal developer. Like, is there, are there ones that you prefer to work with when you're trying to do things or are they all kind of like close, closely similar in like their capabilities at this point? There's, it's a race. Like I think every, every week, like a provider comes out with a new model that's supposed to rival other models. Um, it, I, I get exposed to a lot of them just building through building prism, like needing to like test functionality against different providers. Um, my, my favorites right now that I use on a day to day basis. Um, I use Claude, like Anthropics Claude, uh, their Sonnet 3.5 model. I use that all day, every day. Um, there's another really good one that just came out for Olama, um, deep seeks R1. It's like a, a reasoning model. Um, that one just came out a few days ago and I've been trying to like experiment and play with that. And that's been super promising. So yeah, that's, th those are pretty much the leaders. Like I'll jump over to open AI and use, um, GPT a little bit here and there, but for the most part, I get almost everything I need out of Claude and their, their sonnet models. That's interesting because like from, from like my perspective, like as somebody who works with, you know, non-technical people, like chat GPT is like the only thing that they've like really even heard of. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's all this stuff out there, but like chat GPT has gotten like the mind share. It seems like from, for, at least for normal people. Yeah. I mean, they were the, they were really the, the front runners in exposing, you know, large language models and AI to the mass, mass majority of people. So I think they, they've definitely got their foot in the door marketing wise. Um, I think the next biggest one is probably Anthropic, which has got that Claude series of models. Those seem to be very popular in the programming community as well. I'm going to, that's, I guess I'll make that one like my, my like target to see like how, how I can get stuff to work. Yeah. In my opinion, if you were going to go out and spend like uh, for the most, most places, it's like 20 bucks a month, you know, to have like a chat GPT subscription. Um, it's the same cost over at Anthropic. And I think you'll get your, you'll get more than your money's worth out of going with Anthropic. Um, but there's some really cool stuff that people are doing right now with the O1 series of models from OpenAI. So it's kind of just this back and forth. Um, I've got subscriptions with just about everybody. <laughs> so, um, I, I kind of will, will pop around a little bit, but, um, yeah, I, I personally, I just prefer Anthropic. Okay. Yeah. I'm, de I'm definitely going to check that out. And so is there, so like, so Prism is like fairly stable at this point, right? Like we can go out and, and deploy it in production. It sounds like if lawyers are using it, it's, it's fairly stable or, or is there still like a lot left to be done within the project? I think the API, especially with my most recent refactor, um, I think the API is very stable at this point. Um, there's still like, we're, we haven't gone to 1.0 yet. There's a few things that I, I want to massage a little bit. There's a few features that I need to build that may affect the API, but I definitely see us getting to 1.0 within the next like two months. So I'd say we're, we're pretty close to that, like, 
yeah, being able to hit 1.0, but I'd say it's fairly stable. And there's definitely people using it in production right now. Um, so like worst case, pin your ver, like be very specific about pinning your version. And that's something I call out on the docs too, is that, you know, we're still, we're still pre 1.0. Um, I'm trying not to rock the boat too much, but yeah, pin, pin the version down and just kind of take a look through the release notes and make sure you're up to date. Cause I definitely call out any breaking changes, you know, anywhere that it happens. Well, that's great to hear. Cause I, that always can like really bite us when we <laughs> don't notice those things. So yeah, I just use GitHub releases, make life easy, put all the changes in there. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely like, I'm going to be checking it out and for sure. And like trying some of these things. Cause that's like one of our big things this year is trying to do more AI yeah, um, like in our in my day job, essentially. In your day to day, I think one of the things that's also really worth looking at um, inside of Prism is our structured output functionality, and that is essentially a way to do text generation, but your final result being a like an associative array. So if you want, like, as your programming instead of just getting like plain text back, you get like a blob of like a paragraph or two back from the the language model. Sometimes that's what you want, but other times, if you're going to be passing that data off to let's say like create an eloquent model. You're like, Hey, um, take a look at this chunk of text. Uh, it's like a biography from a user. Right. Um, and I want an associative array back of like the person's name and an array of like all of their different hobbies, you know, and you want to store that as an eloquent model, uh, structured outputs, probably the way to go. You can throw that piece of text at it. You get back an associative array and then you can, you know, maybe validate that and then pass it to an eloquent creation model, and like now you've got stuff stored in the database. So as you're working with programming, definitely take a look at the structured output stuff. I think that'd be very beneficial. Yeah, well, I'm definitely going to be like playing with it. So that's, that's thank you for that little little tip there. Um, is there anything else that you want to direct our listeners to before we let you go for today? Yeah, sure. Uh, you can find me all over the place. Uh, I've got a podcast with my one of my really good friends, Chris Gamir, a slightly caffeinated. Um, you can tune in there and you get to hear all about like stuff I'm working on with Prism and just, you know, keep up to date with what, what the two of us are up to. Um, and then you can find me like pretty much socials everywhere. Uh, Blue Sky, Twitter, all over. Um, easiest place to find that is go to tjmiller.me slash links. And yeah, you can find me all over the place. And if you're doing anything geocoding wise, make sure you check out Geocodio, um, my my day job. We we do a lot of awesome stuff there, and I think we're gonna have the whole crew out at Laracon, and that'd be great. And speaking of conferences, I'll be uh, doing a workshop and a talk this year at PHP Tech. So um, definitely something to come check out. We're gonna do a workshop on building with Prism and uh do some cool stuff talking about click house and database migrations so that'll be super fun yeah, that sounds interesting too i'm struggling with like all the tutorial tracks look like something i want to go to so i had to pick one and just go to it so <laughs> yeah yeah we'll have some fun it'll be a really good conference this year i had a blast last year so definitely looking forward to it thank you thank you again for finding some time to talk to us today yeah thank you so much for having me this was a blast i have to say another heartfelt thank you to tj and to you for finding time to watch our podcast today if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you subscribe with whatever your preferred method is. This video, this episode is available both as a video version on the YouTube, our YouTube channel and an audio version on the PHP Architect website. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Community Corner signing off and remind you to keep listening, keep coding, and keep reading. Thank you.